morning everyone, it's Brett here, Lionheart84, starting with a selfie video unusually. Um, today is uh, Good Friday, so uh, the Friday before Easter, which happens to be a bank holiday here in the UK, probably isn't in all other countries. But uh, I thought I'd take the opportunity, as the weather's quite nice, to pay a visit today to... Um, planning to go to the conservatory at the Barbican which I'll talk about a little bit more when I get there um, seemed like a good day to go and uh, just thought I'd say hello and I'll probably try and put this video out today so that it goes out uh, on Good Friday as well and I'm just in the middle of uh, walking round uh, this is called Finsbury Gardens I think this one Finsbury Circus has just come from Liverpool Street Station and if there's anything interesting to see on the way obviously I'll uh, stop and do the video so I'll catch up with you when I get to the conservatory at the Barbican. So as you can see I'm approaching my destination at the conservatory. Now the point I was going to make about this, um, this is at the Barbican Centre and I think it's, I believe it's the largest Conser public conservatory in London, well, must be the largest conservatory. Um, however, what I wanted to add is you can't just turn up here and walk in, unfortunately. I did a little bit of research online and I found out that um, it's free to get in. Let's show you the out outside of the other section here. It's free to get in, but you they are only open certain times and certain days and you have to book your slot and tickets in advance so um, there are certain they release the tickets a week ahead should you be thinking of coming at any time to visit um, but as I said it's only open on certain days and certain times and if those slots are filled they also release a few tickets I believe at 9.30 in the morning which is what I did today they were sold out for the Good Friday slot but um, I found out that um, I got online just after 9.30 and they had a few tickets available and I've booked the 12 o'clock slot so that I can go off and do a walk afterwards as well. So assuming I'm allowed to video, obviously I'll just have a quick walk around inside and uh, let you see what's what. And just before I go inside the conservatory, I just wanted to show what must be my favourite loquat, loquat, loquat in London. And this one is in a sheltered lower basement in the Barbican. So it must be an absolutely the most perfect position you could possibly get because you've got all the warmth. Let me show you. I'll just zoom out. You've got all the warmth generated by the buildings surrounded which means it's extremely sheltered and you can see they've got uh, 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 I think that's agave americana there the variegated one and there's a phoenix palm there but this is incredibly sheltered here where this loquat is it's a sun trap and it's sitting down well below ground level so the, the whole thing gives a perfect microclimate for it and it's absolutely covered in fruits which here at the beginning of April some of them are about three quarters of an inch and they're really nice and green so you, you can be sure that they'll definitely produce an edible crop this year and it's got loads and loads on so it just goes to show that if you've got a decent uh, microclimate in London you can definitely grow loquats without any problem at all. It doesn't go for me perhaps but um, not many people would have the opportunity to have somewhere like this and it's a shame they haven't got an avocado tree planted here as well because that would probably also thrive. So on with the video. Actually I wanted to show you despite the amazing microclimate afforded by the tall buildings that surround the Barbican and this very sunny courtyard it's quite surprising to see the amount of apparent cold damage these um, these palms have taken here now there is another possibility I don't know what the irrigation system is like here and they could also be limited in the amount of soil they have um, these could be suffering from drought as well as uh, although they're from a Mediterranean climate it could be drought 
as well as coal damage, but certainly the taller ones look as if they're suffering from uh, from leaf browning. There's no problem with the ones in the pots down here. Um, these are palms, of course. You've got uh, what looks like Agapanthus there, um, and this one is a, uh, a fan palm. But these are much, much more hardy. But certainly the I'm looking at the brown grass or whatever it is there next to the palm tree so it is possible that the problem is drought related and not just cold anyway on with the video still haven't got to the concert actually into the conservatory yet because it's not open until 12 so I've just thought I'd stop and have a quick look at the uh, fountains and pond area around the Barbican I don't know if you'll be able to see, but there's a substantial amount of large fish in here. I don't know if they'll show up on camera, they just uh, look like carp to me of some sort. Common carp, I would say. They're obviously extremely happy here, no doubt if you fed them, they'd come charging up to you. Fabulous. Obviously the water's pretty healthy. Ducks are happy here, it's a very sort of um, vivid green colour that probably won't show up on camera. I should imagine these reeds will make quite a nice display if they, uh, once they're fully growing. But uh, yeah, very nice. Lots of little fountains here, pigeons and things. If you happen to live in this area, a particularly nice uh, place to spend a bank holiday or a Sunday to come out here and uh, sit out here with a nice tea or coffee or indeed a glass of wine and enjoy the uh, concrete surroundings. Well worth a visit to the Barbican if you think you're coming to the conservatory. Anyway, I shall uh, soon be soon be getting in at the 12 o'clock opening time so here we are at last finally made it in the conservatory it is lovely and warm in here strelitzias in flower you won't recognise what all the plants are obviously there'll be loads of things like brugmansias in here not in flower this time of the year I don't expect to see find any fruiting plants, but there's certainly going to be plenty of, well, there's monsteras here, but they won't be fruiting. But there's certainly going to be lots of interesting things. Here's an avocado, I think. Yes, yeah, an avocado. No signs of any flowers on it. It's probably been in that pot for a long time. Banana of some description. See the kind of height it is in here. Obviously, the tropical plant enthusiasts will, uh, tropical fruiting plant enthusiasts will probably recognise what some of the plants are that I'm not familiar with. We all know the bananas, the astrachinas. Please do not touch, that's because that's uh, an oleander, which is poisonous. A few little bell flowers here. I don't know what this is, but this is stunning. Look at that. Absolutely fabulous. Certainly worth visiting here if you like your uh, Subtropical and tropical plants. Looks like they've got a load of orchids along the sides. Not in flower at the moment. Well, one or two are. It's a cymbidium. Always the reliable ones flowering, cymbidiums. Far and away the easiest to get flowering. 
lots of pelargoniums along here which are being uh, kept in flower. I'll probably keep the video going for most of them walk around that looks like. Mm, I was going to say some fine of some form of psycho but it's not. They've got some plants labelled but not many. This is a variegated bougainvillea cool. above me. This is, this is Another strelitzia. I think that one's junk. Uh, I forgot the name of it now. I should remember. Nikolai. Strelitzia Nikolai, I think that one. do have uh, stairs you can go up as well. Boy, it is warm in here. Definitely a paradise for uh, various bromeliads and orchids. I love the humidity in here. That's Ecmia fasciata. There's stag's horn ferns. Particularly large pots. Wouldn't be surprised if the roots don't find their way through the concrete. That actually looks like a tamarillo there. Yeah, that's definitely, I recognise the stem. A lot healthier than my tamarillos. This goes to show if you've got a decent greenhouse how uh, how well these things can grow. Of course there's no flowers or fruits on them this time of the year. Lots of miniature bromeliads here growing on the wall. It's not a gigantic conservatory, it's not like going to Kew, but there's still enough here <coughs> to uh, keep looking for a if you're really into your plants, you could probably look for an hour or two, but for me, 10 minutes will be enough because I've got other things to be doing today. But it is lovely to see flowers at this time of the year, as well as, of course, the variegated leaves. Lots and lots and lots of amaryllis flowering. I don't know what this uh, flowering plant is. There was another large one on the other side, but it's very attractive. If you have a conservatory to grow them in. used to be a popular house plant over here, Belloperone, shrimp plant. You can see these look, these are meant to look a little bit like shrimps. I haven't seen one for quite a long time actually, probably not as uh, quite as in fashion as they used to be. <clears throat> this one looks like an orange hibiscus. Oh, this is nice. Come. Yeah, an orange hibiscus. Or a butylon, possibly. I think it's a butylon, actually. No label on this one. There's some more huge Stradizia plants. That one's Regini. And another avocado here. Don't think it's the same one I looked at before. Yeah, another avocado. Again, no sign of any flowers on it. They probably just grew it from stone. Looks like it's been cut back hard at some stage because it got too big. Let's have a walk upstairs. 
wonderful. And there's another complete section to the conservatory here. This must have cost an absolute fortune to build back in the day when they designed the Barbican. If you look at that, they even have a bar here. I might have myself a glass of wine to walk around with. Relaxing music to get you in the mood for a glass of wine. Some quite substantial palms in here actually. Large ones are um, philodendrons of some sort. And the colour on this uh, amaryl is fabulous. I don't think I've seen one that colour. Oh, there's fish in here. They mostly look like well, the orange ones, obviously, goldfish. The others might just be something like a rad. I'm not sure if they're a tropical fish, I don't think they are. Water's very clear here, very good quality. There's some koi in there as well. See the koi over at the background. There's a large one down here, he's trying to escape the video. Lovely place to visit the Gopton, on, especially as it's free. And here's another avocado tree. A little bit larger, this one. Again, no sign of any... Uh, no chance of it flowering, I shouldn't say. They are very restricted in the pots here, so the growth is quite controlled on them. I notice they've got sachets hanging from some of the plants, which I think is where they've released natural biological predators, spider mite predators, I would say. There's a citrus, there's a citrus here. It says Citro uh, Fortunella Metis, Tangerine. Uh, Kumquat cross. No flowers or fruits on it at the moment. That's right, Brugmansia. <laughs> yeah, I've got a plant channel, YouTube channel, that's what I'm filming for. <laughs> Asparagus fern and got some tree ferns in here as well. Yeah, they've got a lot of these little sticky paper traps around and various types of uh, yeah, they've got various traps here which obviously catch insects biologically and release things like spider mite predators. So um, quite a good idea to use biological controls somewhere like this. plants growing up on all these uh, other layers it's just like a, just like a tropical jungle really nice music here to get you in the mood for walking around plants Ok, 
Okay, I think it's time for a glass of wine. So cheers everybody, we've got a glass of Sauvignon Blanc to enjoy amongst the plants. That's to everyone's health for Easter. Well, we've even found a coffee plant here. Coffee uh, Arabica. No flowers or berries on it. Looks like the same problem that I used to have when I tried to grow mine, very brown leaves from the salts in the water. Hmm. No doubt it flowers occasionally. Yeah. Get a nice view of the upper part of the conservatory from here. Funny enough, this actually looks like a loquat in here. I'm sure it is. Yeah, got one inside. Ironically, no flowers and fruits on it, unlike the one outside. A nice high up view of the conservatory here. Well, that concludes my visit to the conservatory today. Have my glass of wine. We're going to get out and get walking down to the Thames and perhaps pop to Barrow Market for a short while. Thanks for joining me in the conservatory. It can be such a joy to walk around London sometimes at the uh, weekends. You get a nice day. It's not warm. It's probably around... 13 centigrade, about 55 Fahrenheit at the moment. So I'm just, uh, I've left the Barbican and the conservatory and I'm just heading down towards the uh, Thames now. <coughs> and I'm going to cross London Bridge and uh, see if uh, Borough Market is still open and uh, perhaps buy some uh, nice cheeses to try and bread if it's still open. Uh, possibly some more tropical fruit, we'll see what's available. But um, I just thought I'd. Uh, do a minute of video walking along obviously there's modern buildings there and there's some magnificent uh, old buildings as well as you head down this way just like to do a short part of the video for people interested in London and then I'll carry on when I get to the Thames now for anyone interested in London history and geography I believe I'm now walking alongside the Bank of England. This is the main central bank that fixes interest rates. And I'm not sure if you can actually have a current bank account as such, but they're in charge of all the monetary matters for the UK. As you can see, the walls are somewhat uh, high and secure. The idea being that you can't easily get in if you wish to help yourself to um, some extra cash. Fabulous doors there. <laughs> Wonderful area to walk around and I shall shortly be at London Bridge which I will uh, also do a short video as I walk across. Very quickly, just opposite the bank, is Mansion House, which is the Lord Mayor's London residence, where they have numerous banquets. Fantastic building. And we're just outside Bank Station here as well. You can see there in the background the walkie-talkie building. carry on the walk down to uh, the Thames. So I'm heading out across London Bridge now. That's the shards there if you're not a Londoner. So you're not familiar with uh, some of the sites. That's the tallest building in London. I have had plans to build something taller but not as yet. And then over on the right hand side if I look over London Bridge. There's of course the River Thames, 
Borough Market's over near where that church is. I'm going to go there and see if it's still open. As I've said, and perhaps buy some more fruit, cheeses, bread. And eat a few bits and pieces there and have a thoroughly bad or naughty Good Friday. My diet's out the window today. Beautiful to walk around here when the weather's like this. It's absolutely glorious. There's Tower Bridge in the distance. Now, if you haven't been to London as a tourist, perhaps if you're from America or Australia, then you must try and get here one day because um, it's a lovely place to visit. Obviously, try and visit when it's a little bit mild and not the middle of winter. Just thought I'd do a few seconds of video. It's absolutely buzzing along the uh, Riverbank today. Got to wrap up the video here. I'm going to do a fair bit more walking. There's nothing else that I need to show on the video. See how busy it is. Good Friday. Lovely sunny weather. It's quite warm. Probably about 55 Fahrenheit, 30, 13 degrees centigrade. So it's got people out and about. So it's a bank holiday. Hope you enjoyed the rest of the video. If you've got this far. Just wanted to thank everyone for watching and I'll catch up with you all in the next video. See you all soon. Breath out for now.